What's up? It's yours truly, Carcino. And let's get to it. So, well. Now, here's the situation. Ever since Tyson Fury has won the fight, a lot of things has happened, y'all. A lot of things has transpired. Do you want to hear what they are? Obviously, because you're here. Now, I must say, and I need to state, that I am a very thorough individual. I always tell people what's right and the way I truly feel. People like to make projections based on what they would do in the situations or how they would react. I am not upset with any human being who chose Deontay Wilder because they want to root for the brother and pride of your tribe, which I clearly understand. I clearly understand it more than anybody would. Now, we're at a different situation. In that situation, we have arised to or have arose to has put us on this playing field where everyone attacks if you don't believe or say something that they agree with. They all get together and join up and attack. Now, only thing people want to do now is attack. They don't even really care about it. They just see everyone else doing it. They like to do it. People are like, you're a sellout, so you know. You gonna go with this white guy over your brother, Deontay Wilder. You always against the brother. How dare you take Tyson Fury? Overwild. And I told the world Tyson Fury was the better boxer. He was the better fighter. He knew how to do the things he needed to have done. And because of that, he would be successful. And y'all blasted me for supporting a white guy. Call me everything up the book. Except... You never hold anybody responsible. You said we took up for Deontay Wilder was dis disrespectful of a black man. That was disrespectful for us to say what he got he deserved coming. That ass whooping he took Saturday night was the ass whooping he deserved. 
This man, black man from Alabama, said his trainer spiked his water. Mark Breland, one of the most accomplished amateur fighters in the history of boxing, former champion, the one that's been with you for 41 victories in your career. The moment you take your first loss, I think 42 victories, if I'm not mistaken. All your victories, he's been there for. And the one loss you experience, you say this man decides he just wanted to spike your water. And you carried stuff on your back. The Tyson Fury had on illegal gloves. You came with every excuse in the world. And the results were just the same. You looked as fatigued and out of it after three rounds as you did in the last fight. You disrespected Tyson Fury, called the man all kind of cheats. He cheated to win last fight, and you conned black folks, just like you, to believe that, knowing deep down it was a lie. You know that man didn't cheat to beat you the last time. He didn't need to cheat to beat you. And he wanted to show you again. Wanted to prove again to you. You can never beat him. And that's what this fight was about. This was somebody getting what they deserved. And that's what happened to Deontay Wilder. He got what he deserved. The same energy he put out was the same energy he got coming out. <coughs> now... Do y'all black folks believe he owes Mark Breland an apology? Nobody's talking about that. See, it's okay to condemn, right? But you don't want to hold your own responsible. That's the problem. That's hypocrisy. That's the thing you're supposed to be fighting against, right? That's that double standard. That keeps rearing its head every time you look around. Hmm? Now I told you. I told you. This was going to be the results. It was going to end one way and a knockout. Now, he's taking all these punishments and they're going to keep lying to keep deceiving you into believing he's something he's not. While other fighters are looking at this saying, oh, he's not that guy anymore. And he took a lot of big punches. Guys who keep doing that don't normally keep taking those big punches. Because next time you know he'll be fighting a lesser opponent, he get hit one more time, he back on Dream Street. He's not reacting well to punches anymore. It's happening a lot quicker. Watch boxing for a lot of decades, buddy.
And I can tell you, I've seen this. So when you don't want to shake somebody's hand and you don't want to congratulate people, that's fine. But when you call people and accuse them of things and you was wrong, a man is supposed to apologize. A man is supposed to say, I'm sorry. If you didn't want Mark Breland to be your trainer anymore, all you had to do was say, Mar, this ain't working out. I want to go in a different direction. Handle it like a man instead of trying to tarnish somebody who built your career into something. A man that helped guide you to keep you safe. He's one of the reasons that you can feed your family and got millions and millions of dollars. He was there before it was any millions. Well, it was just a dream of you becoming a champion. So, this ain't about the white guy. This ain't about the black guy. It's about the right guy. We went for the right guy. The right guy won. The person that didn't lie. The person that didn't cheat. The person that took it seriously. The person who was respectful. The person with class. The person who was righteous. He won. So, all I did was give Deontay Wilder back what he gave out to the world. And you don't like it. Too damn bad. Because he deserves all of that and more. Let me repeat, he deserves all of that and more. Now, if he learns to humble himself and really be a servant of God, then maybe, maybe. We can go back to rooting for him. I'm rooting that he changed the era of his ways. Some fool said because he didn't give me an interview. <laughs> Do you think I need an interview for Deontay Wilder? Deontay Wilder used to work with us before anyone was really even knew who he was at that time he was somebody um up and coming he was no big entourage i think it was just him jds is managing him and we could call him anytime we wanted i think he changed after, I want to say, right before the Fury fight. But I, I don't really just call fighters like that. He stayed in contact with Sean. That's my business partner. We both own uh, BoxingSocialist.com. He stayed more in contact with Sean than me. Because both of them, Sean is also a pastor of a church so Sean 
and him would talk Bible talk for like for hours. That was, that's how they do. That's how they get down. They love it. And those two would go ahead and talk all day long. So he's very familiar with Sean and everything else. Sean was actually got given an opportunity that if he could find sponsorships for Wilder, then go ahead and come on in and bring some sponsorships to Deontay Wilder. At that time, it was a hard thing to do because a lot of people wasn't into boxing at that time. They had shifted to other sports. So a lot of sponsorship money was only looking at for big fights. Now... When you start going into different aspects of the sport, you start going for all these different type of packages, these different type of uh, deals that people present. And the more you win, the more things you're offered, the more things explore and open up and your ego starts to explode. He used to do the podcast show that we had. Uh, I never, I, don't, I think I might have appeared on there once where Wilder was on there, but I rarely was on our website. That was Carla J and Sean Craddock, the Boxing Socialist. They ran our Boxing Socialist blog talk radio thing that's going on. I didn't feel we needed it, but because we already had Rope It Up Radio that was basically partnered with us. So, we used to have their thing on there, then all of a sudden, we're creating our own, and I felt like that was just more work and more of a waste of time, because we've already had rope a Radio, but, need, you know, nevertheless, those two decided to do it, and they had some great shows, uh, great episodes, and we've had Bob Arum on there. Uh, Wilder was a guest that was on there considerably. Him and Sean talked, and he was as funny, as charismatic as he's ever been in his life. Those two are like peas in a pod. And I don't know what happened to Deontay, but his whole thing changed. The bigger he got, Started doing all these pay-per-view shows. His ego grew out of his body. He used to be fun. Smiled all the time. Loved people. Now he's just angry pro-black man. And let everybody build him up around hate. Something he's never been. And I watched him change and morph into this personality that they wanted him to be. Whoever these people were around him. But it was all fun. So, while you was going with people like Fred, who was feeding you and that Deontay Wilder, you don't need them, you pro black, and they just don't want to keep a black man down. And you wanted to roll with Fred. And talk about pro black and right he he was doing all that to this day. To this day. Deontay Wilder at any time could have took any of those people that were in the black media and made them stars and gave exclusive interviews to them. But no. He went in his hotel room and took the Jewish kid, Ellie Sackback, and said Ellie, you, Ellie, sat back. 
are going to get the exclusive. To this day! To this day! <laughs> nobody said nothing about that, though. I didn't see nobody get upset when he did that. And all y'all black media who kept riding the wave and was pushing it, why y'all ain't get mad about that? Now, my blackness will always say go for the brother, and you won't well for the brother. But when the brother man ain't doing the right thing to be the right man, this is the problem you run into. This is what happened. You ran into a giant problem where race and color wasn't going to get you out of it. Your mouth wrote a check your ass couldn't cash. And yes, I gave him credit for fighting hard and showing hard. And now his heart would never be in question. And I never questioned his heart to begin with. I questioned his character as a man. That's what's on the line here. And when your character isn't right, then I, I, ain't, I can't deal with you. You have no morals. You have no code. You have no honor. That's what I don't respect. That's a coward, not a man. And because someone does that, they can never have my respect until they earn it. Now, you could just give it to them just because he's black. That's you. I'm real about mine. So... I'm going to go here and sip the rest of this tea that has now gotten cold. And we'll holler later. Thanks for everybody who supported. My cash app is Carcino. The super chat is working. And we are out.